Oniote aga nii. I am Oneida. Oniote aga means people of the standing stone. Oneida is part of the Haudenosaunee Confederation. Haudenosaunee means people of the longhouse. Our confederacy consists of the Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, Oneida, Mohawk, and Seneca nations. We have been here since the beginning of time. Our language has existed since the beginning of time. Our people have been here for thousands of years, even when Sky Woman fell from the Sky World and landed on the Great Turtle's back. From that point on, Turtle Island was actually created. Another tradition that we have in our culture is that a lot of times when we do opening ceremonies or different types of events, we give the Thanksgiving address. And we give thanks to everything from the stars, to the moon, to the winds, to the water, to the animals, to the plants, the medicines. There's 19 different things that we give thanks to. Part of the reason why is so that we remember our responsibility to Mother Earth and our responsibility to our ways. When you are conceived as a child, you actually, the Creator actually puts a fire within you. It's your spirit. Sometimes your spirit burns bright, sometimes your spirit does not. So when we first came to this idea of doing the talk, the first thing that entered my head was 200. And you say 200? Yep, well, 200 years. Because exactly 200 years ago in 1821, Five Oneidas, two Seneca, one Onondaga, and five Stockbridge decided that they were going to travel far west to the Michigan Territory to go and check out some land. What? Land? Why would you check out land? We've got plenty of land. I mean, during the Revolutionary War, our men and women fought and died with the colonists. During 1777, our men and women carried bushels of corn to help George Washington's starving troops. And come on, we were in with GW. What the heck? But that wasn't the case. And unfortunately, we were not secure. And in 1779, George Washington ordered General Sullivan to go around and burn all of the villages and cornfields of all of the tribes who sided with the Patriots. Unfortunately, the Oneidas were actually caught in the crossfires. Our villages were burned, our cornfields were burned, and a lot of people died of starvation during that winter. But time goes on, and our people survived. And the one thing that our people could do was say, Oni o te aga ni'i. So, in 1794, we signed the Treaty of Canandaigua. It was with all the nations. And essentially, for the Oneidas, it recognized us as being part of the Revolutionary War. And what it did was it guaranteed our territory. But the issue wasn't that we signed a treaty. The issue was the encroachment of the settlers. The issue was that the settlers didn't respect our boundaries and the federal government wouldn't enforce when people crossed our boundaries. And there was a whole host of other players who really wanted the Oneidas and all of the other nations out of New York. So 200 years ago, this group of men traveled over three and a half weeks across the northern part of New York. And it wasn't like there was a highway. It was treacherous roads. There were swamps. They made it to Buffalo. They loaded a boat called Walk in the Water. They went from Buffalo to Detroit to Mackinac then finally over to the Green Bay Territory, which was at the time in Michigan. And during that time, they signed a treaty with the Menominee and the Ho-Chunk Nations. The treaty was for 6.7 million acres for $1,500. If you take that math and you calculate it out, that's 0 0.0002 of a penny for 6.7 million acres. So we sign the treaty, go back to New York. 1822, we come back, we sign another treaty, give them some provisions, we leave. And then in 1823, the first group is ready to leave. The problem with the Oneidas at that time 
was that our tribe was already fractured by religion and politics. So some Oneidas will completely refuse to ever leave New York. A group of Oneidas will eventually end up in Canada. And that first family in 1823, those families start to pack up and they decide to go to the new territory. The thing about it in 1823 was that you could take one pine box and whatever you could carry on your back. That's not one pine box per person, that's one pine box for your entire family. So if you can imagine these individuals sitting on the back of a horse and wagon, riding away, and they're never gonna see the beautiful waterfalls, the beautiful trees, they will never see those things ever again. And you have to imagine what that would do to their fire. But we survive. And a few years later, we end up along Duck Creek. And Duck Creek is not an easy place. The woods are completely very dense. There's no roads. There's not a lot of places to farm. But again, the Oneidas that come here, that are here, can say, Oneoteaganii, I am Oneida. And they survive. And they become farmers. And they clear the land. And they take care of each other to make sure that everyone survives. And that goes along pretty good for, for quite a while. And of course, there are also still shady dealings that happen with the Indian agents. But we are on our way to being happy, to having houses, to having farms, to having horses and uh, different types of farm animals. So what happens? Government policy happens. And we go from the 6.7 million acres down to 500,000 acres, down to 65,000 acres in 1887 due to the Dawes Allotment Act. The next policy that they decide to put on our people are the Indian boarding schools. They take our kids, they cut their hair. You're punished if you speak Oneida. They desperately want to assimilate you so they lose that momentum. They lose the language so they can't say Oneotaga Ni'i. More policy happens in 1909. That's the creation of the town of Hobart. Why create a town? Well, they decided that they wanted some roads and they wanted telephone. So they create the town of Hobart. The problem is when you create a town, you create taxes. The problem with taxes is that a lot of our Oneida people still spoke Oneida. They couldn't read or write English. So the marshals come along, once again, tell you to pack up your wagon and get off the land. But through time, we had a lot of amazing, strong elders. We had a lot of amazing tribal men and women who fought for every inch of prosperity that we have today. It is absolutely amazing what we've been able to accomplish. I think about myself, and I think about when my fire is low. And let me tell you, I've gone through breast cancer not once, but twice. And it knocks you to your knees. I have lost two of my history mentors in one year, where you can't even pick up the phone and say, hey, I need to ask you about this, because there's nobody on the other side. Or you're just really having a bad day because your dad comes home and tells you that he has mental difficulties and they've tested him and it's true. So when that happens to me and I'm extremely low in my fire, what I do is I think about the creator and I think about my family and I think about my friends and then I think about all the people who struggled before me and all the people who had passed on before me and all of these elders who persevered through generations to make sure that Oneida was still here for me today. So that's what keeps my fire strong. Oneoteaga ni'i.